journey of a personal story. Because all of us have a personal story. But as I go through this personal story, I want you to come along with me. But because you don't know my story, I believe that you do have a story that you know that you can relate to better than the story I will tell you. But that story is not someone else, it is you. It's a story about you, where you come from, and who you are. My story starts with a line that says, I am proud that I was born poor. With that, I then say, just the sheer possibility of what life can give you if you determine. So you don't have to have been born in a rich family or endowed with anything. But the simplicity of poverty is the one that can be able to unlock doors that you possibly thought were closed and you will never be able to grab, crack through them. It's a story of a young man born in abject poverty of parents that could not ever be able to take him to school. If a story of me, Klengani Matebul. I was born of parents that did everything that they gave birth to. But they couldn't take me to school. So what did I do? I went out, snuck into a truck that was taking seasonal workers to farms to go and work as a child laborer at age seven. Now any responsible adult would have turned me away, but they didn't see me. Because strategically, I waited for the truck to get full and start, snuck underneath, at the back of the truck, underneath the clothes. When they discovered me, it was way too far for them to turn back. And they decided, listen, we'll send this young man at the end of the month when it goes, the truck goes back to pick up other workers. When I arrived at the farms, they said, there's no place to play. You're going to go to work. I went to work and had my first encounter with injustice, with racism. In a cotton field, you are not allowed to stand up until your, your, your bag is full. And if you stand up, your foreman will come through to your line and clap you whichever way, whether you call it heat or whatever the case is. What happened is I observed the elder women being beaten up by a young man who happened to be the son of the farmer. And where I grew up, a man my age or even younger or even slightly taller than me, if he did that, we needed to sort it out through a bit of fighting. So the nearest thing I did is I stood on my line until he forgot about the rest of the other people and came straight into my line. The end of, the, of that story was that he got a beating that he had to run back to his father and I got fired from my first job. The mere fact that I got fired from my first job meant that I had to go back home. But it taught me one thing, that if I could be fired at seven years old, then I can never be afraid to be fired any other time in my life. Went back home, had to go to school, still there was no money to take me to school. I had to ensure that I start walking 18 kilometers to go to a petrol station and work as a petrol attendant without shoes. 
So 30, 30, 36 kilometers round trip in between sleeping in a toilet for 30 minutes or so and come back to class to be beaten for missing a class. But that happened without me having a uniform. I wore female trousers to be able to fit. I took a shirt that was oversized, thrown away, cut it, only remained with a collar to give a semblance that I had a uniform so that I don't get chased away from school. I sold oranges. I picked up a camera that was thrown away, fixed it to take pictures in weddings and all over the show to ensure that I can take myself to school. What does all this then say? Because it is as well very crucial to then lead into saying, yes, you can be poor, yes, you can be anything. The reality of the situation is that hardships are on, only prepares us for opportunities that we can be able to take. Where you get born and from who you get born, you have no choice over that. But you have every responsibility to turn that situation around to your favor. Life can always be a, 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 road, a, a bed of roses or a bed of thorns. Depending on the choices you make, you can walk through the thorns to the roses or you can stop near the thorns and turn back and be miserable for the rest of your life. What has happened to me, because we don't have the whole day, is that out of being a farm laborer, I today own a farm. From being a petrol attendant, from being a petrol attendant, I today sit in a board of a motor manufacturing brand that manufactures premium brand with its head office headquartered in Munich. From a person that did not have money and did not have a relationship with money, that had to do everything that needed to be done to get money, just to go to school. I've been blessed to have been able to be, to have worked of, for three out of the four major banks in South Africa and helped establish one private bank in those and became the MD of the largest private bank in South Africa. I today sit in the world of central banking. Now what does all this mean in relation to how all of us can approach life? All it tells me is that leadership is not learned. Leadership is born out of experiences. Entrepreneurship is not about a degree in rocket science. Entrepreneurship is about things that on a daily basis you encounter. The question is whether you have the ability to note and notice those things that you can turn them and become successful. Someone spoke about broken things. I told you about a shirt that was thrown that I used so that I don't get thrown out of school. I told you about a camera that I picked up that was broken, that I used to be able to pay my way through school. If 
every one of us as human beings are a minute or seconds away from an invention or an innovation or being rich. But that depends on the attitude which you then apply to the things you see. Every opportunity, every obstacle you meet, your attitude will determine how best you get out of that situation. I say this always. I come from a continent of Africa, a continent that is rich. In simple terms, Africa is not poor, but it's populated by, by poor people. It's populated by poor people because it is us who wants to be consumers. We want to be the early adopters of technologies. The nearest new cell phone. Who designed it? Somebody born out of a woman and a man. Might be born differently than you and me. But I can bet they've been born on one or two of two ways. Either they've been born in a natural way, like me, or they were born through caesarean birth. So if they have been born in that manner, and they can succeed, what stops you? Because you use the same route they used to come to the earth. I was raised by two women, my grandmother and my mother. Both two women always told me, you had no choice on how you came to, to the world, but you have the responsibility to leave the world better than you found it. <clears throat> what do we do as parents? We take our kids to the best schools. Some will say they are international schools, but the international school in our locality. What? So we are not teaching our kids to trade with other nations. We are teaching our kids to trade with themselves. What's wrong with us opening up the doors and saying we are going to have a school that will have people from other countries so that they start learning how to trade at a younger age with people of diverse cultures and diverse upbringing. Because that way will break the, cy the cycle of poverty. That way we'll be able to produce the people that today we can be able to talk about, whether it's Steve Jobs or it's Bill Gates or it's anyone else. Innovation. It's something that is in your fingertips on a daily basis. It's born out of the experience that you see daily. It's not the shoe you wear. It's not the jacket you, 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 you have or you have seen in another shop. But it's because that which you encounter as you pass a particular spot. If you decide that I will turn that stone to be something, you will indeed do so. When in South Africa diamond was discovered, it was a useless stone that today runs the world. Don't set out yourself to be a big player in a small little town. Set yourself to be great at what you can do in a small town, but export the ideas to the world, because today the world is a global village. You can go to London today for a meeting and be back in Johannesburg or home the next morning. That means the world is in your fingertips. How you then decide to interact with the world, it's what the world will then throw back at you. No one gets rich by sitting back. No one gets to be great by hiding in a corner. The difference between my story that I tell of my poverty 
is because I want you to be able to understand that no successful person falls from the sky. Everybody is born with challenges. It's how you overcome the challenges that defines who you are. At the end of the day, you are one human being with one life, with one voice, with one body, probably with two legs, potentially with the greatest ability to surpass everybody. The world is run by minorities. Africa is minority in terms of the billions of people that populate the world. Why set yourself to be an employee and not an employer? Why set yourself to be a consumer, not a producer? Why don't you think that China is a big place with potential workers for you? Because that's where your product should be selling. Why don't you think as India with 8 billions of people as potential employees for you, not you living here going to look for, empl for, for employment, but that is a big market for you to be able to export your products. It's your life, it's in your hands, you decide what to do with it. I've made mine and I'm not done.